After Prince Aemon had claimed Vhagar and the fight with the Valerian boys that cost him his eye, King Viserys tried to make a peace, requiring each of the boys to apologise to the other, but these courtesies did not appease their vengeful mothers. Queen Alicent demanded that one of Lucerys Valerian's eyes should be put out, for the eye he had cost Aemon. Princess Rhaenyra would have none of that, but insisted that Prince Aemon should be questioned sharply until he revealed where he heard sons called the Strongs. To name them that was tantamount to saying they were bastards, with no rights of succession, and that she herself was guilty of high treason. When pressed by the king, Prince Aemon said it was his brother, Aegon, who had told him they were Strongs, and Prince Aegon only said, everyone knows, just look at them. King Viserys finally put an end to the questioning, declaring he would hear no more. No eyes would be put out, he decreed, but should any man or woman or child Noble or common, mock his grandsons as strongs again. Their tongues would be pulled out with hot pincers. He further commanded his wife and daughter to kiss and exchange vows of love and affection, but their false smiles and empty words deceived no one but the king. As for the boys, Prince Aemon said later that he had lost an eye but gained a dragon that day and counted it a fair exchange. To prevent further conflict and to put an end to these vile rumours, King Viserys further decreed that Queen Alicent and her sons would return with him to court while Princess Rhaenyra confined herself to Dragonstone with her sons. Henceforth, Sir Eric Cagill of the Kingsguard would serve as her sworn shield while Breakbones, Sir Harwin Strong, returned to Harrenhal. These rulings pleased no one, excepting Eustace Wrights. According to Mushroom's testimony, one man at least was thrilled by the decree, for Dragonstone and Driftmark lay quite quite close to one another, and this proximity would allow Daemon Targaryen ample opportunity to comfort his niece, Princess Rhaenyra, unpronounced to the king. Though Viserys would reign for nine more years, the bloody seed of the Dance of the Dragons had already been planted, and 120 AC was the year when it began to sprout. The next to perish were the Elder Strongs. Lionel Strong, Lord of Harrenhal, and Hand of the King accompanied his son and heir, Sir Harwin, on his return to the great Harfaring Castle. Shortly after their arrival, a fire broke out in the tower where they were sleeping, and both father and son were killed, along with three of their retainers and a dozen servants. The cause of the fire was never determined. Some put it down to a simple mischance, whilst others muttered that Black Harren's seat was cursed and brought only doom to any man who held it. Many suspected the blaze was set intentionally. Mushroom suggests that the sea snake was behind it, as an act of vengeance against the man who had cockolded his son. Certain Eustace, more plausibly, suspects Prince Damon, removing a rival for Princess Rhaenyra's infections. Others have put forth the notion that Laris Cloudfoot might have been responsible, with his father and elder brother dead. Laris had become Lord of Harrenhal. The most disturbing possibility was advanced by none other than Grand Maester Melos, who muses that the king himself might have given the command. If Viserys had come to accept the rumour about the parentage of Rhaenyra's children, he might well have wished to remove the man who had dishonoured his daughter, but he somehow revealed the bastardy of her sons. Were that so, Lionel Strong's death was an unfortunate accident, for his lordship's decision to see his son back to Harrenhal had been unforeseen. Lord Strong had been the king's hand, and Viserys had come to rely upon his strength and counsel. The king had reached the age of 43, and had grown quite stout. He no longer had the young man's vigour, and was afflicted by gout, aching joints and back pain and a tightness in his chest that came and went, and often left him red-faced and short of breath. The governance of the realm was a daunting task. The king needed a strong and capable hand to shoulder some of his burdens. Briefly, he considered sending for Princess Rhaenyra, who better to rule with him than the daughter he meant to succeed him on the Iron Throne. But that would have meant bringing the princess and her sons back to King's Landing, where more conflict with the queen and her own brood would have been inevitable. He considered his brother as well, until he recalled Prince Damon's previous stint on the small council. Grand Maester Melos suggested bringing in some younger man, and put forward several names, but his grace chose familiarity, and recalled to court Sir Otto Hightower, the Queen's father, who had filled the office before, for both Viserys and the old King Jaehaerys. Yet hardly had Sir Otto arrived at the Red Keep to take up the handship, than word reached court that Princess Rhaenyra had remarried, taking to husband her uncle, Daemon Targaryen. The princess was 23, Prince Daemon 39. King, court and commons were all outraged by the news. Neither Daemon's wife nor Rhaenyra's husband had been dead even half a year. To wed again so soon was an insult to their memories. The marriage had been performed on Dragonstone, suddenly and secretly. Certain users claims that Rhaenyra knew that her father would never approve of the match, so she wed in haste to make certain he could not prevent the marriage. Mushroom puts forward a different reason. The princess was once again with child and did not wish to birth a bastard. And thus that dreadful year 120 AC ended as it begun, 
with a woman labouring in childbirth. Princess Rhaenyra's pregnancy had a happier outcome than Lady Lena's had. As the year waned, she brought forth a small but robust son, a pale princeling with dark purple eyes and pale silvery hair. She named him Aegon. Prince Daemon had at last a living son of his own blood, and this new prince, unlike his three half-brothers, was plainly a Targaryen. In King's Landing, however, Queen Alicent grew most wroth when she learnt that the babe had been named Aegon, taking it for a slight against their own son, which according to the testimonies of Mushroom, it most certainly was. By all rights, the year 122 should have been a joyous one for House Targaryen. Princess Rhaenyra took to the birthing bed once more and gave her uncle Daemon a second son, named Viserys after his grandsire. The child was smaller and less robust than his brother, but proved to be a most precocious child. Somewhat ominously, the dragon's egg placed in his cradle never hatched. The greens took that as an ill omen and were not shy about saying as much. Later the same year, King's Landing celebrated a wedding as well. Following the ancient tradition of House Targaryen, King Viserys wed his son, Aegon the Elder, to his daughter, Helena. The groom was 15 years of age, and lazy, and somewhat sulky boy, certainly used as tells us, but possessed more than a healthy appetite, a glutton at the table, and pinching and fondling any serving girl who strayed within his reach. The bride, his sister, was but 13. Though plumper and less striking than most Targaryens, Helena was a pleasant, happy girl, and all agreed she would make a fine mother. And so she did. And quickly, barely a year later in 123 AC, the 14-year-old princess gave birth to twins, a boy she named Jaehaerys, and a girl she named Jaehaera. Prince Aegon had heirs of his own now, the Greens at court proclaimed. A dragon's egg was placed in the cradle of each child, and two hatchlings soon came forth. Yet, all was not so well with these new twins. Jaehaera was tiny, and slow to grow, she did not cry, she did not smile, she did none of the things a babe was meant to do. Her brother, whilst larger and more robust, was also less perfect than expected of a Targaryen princeling, boasting six fingers on his left hand and six toes upon each foot. 